Hey guys, welcome to the UF Disciple channel. Today we're going to be doing a shootout between four different GTX 970s. So let's get started. To begin, let's go over the cards featured in today's matchup. We have two competitors from Galax, the 970 EXOC and the 970 Hall of Fame. Then from other manufacturers, we have the base level, nearly referenced EVGA GTX 970 Gaming ACX 2.0, as well as the Gigabyte GTX 970 WinForce Edition. If you want to see a detailed review of each of these graphics cards, you can click the icon in the top right hand corner to be directed to the playlist containing all of those videos. Now that we know the competitors, let's go over the rules of engagement. I'll be presenting you both with the pure frame rate data on each card, but also the card's value for its performance. The cards were tested with the following games. Batman Arkham Knight, Crisis 3, Far Cry 4, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Tomb Raider, and The Witcher 3. With each game, they were evaluated at the highest graphical settings possible in each game at the resolutions of 1920x1080, 2560x1440, and 3840x2160. Also, each card was tested at the max overclock that I attained with each GPU. Again, check the playlist if you want to see the specific details of all of that. For the value comparison with each card, the GPU had to be able to at least attain a 30 FPS average to be considered, but this wasn't a limiting factor for the cards until the 4K gaming came around. Also, for the value comparison, I'll be using the GPU's cost here in South Africa using the RAN, but also the US dollar. For the EVGA 970, I'm using the cost of $290 and 5,699 RAND. For the 970 WinForce, that has the price of $300 and 5,999 RAND. The 970 Hall of Fame comes in at $380 and 6,399 RAND. And finally, the 970 EXOC is $320 and 5,499 RAND. So let's jump right into all of the technical details. Pause the video as you need, don't drop the card, to evaluate any of the data that is being presented. At 1080p, the Galax GTX 970 Hall of Fame wins in every single game and ties the 970 EXOC in Arkham Knight for pure frame rates. The Hall of Fame card typically managed several FPS more than the competition. The value game at 1080p is a different story. In the currency of the South African Rand, the Galax 970 EXOC wins the price to performance evaluation in every game. But with the US dollar, it's a near even toss up between either the 970 WinForce or the EVGA 970. The only game the EVGA 970 couldn't hang in was The Witcher 3, with it averaging only around 48 FPS when the other cards easily topped over 60. At 1440p, the story of the top dog card is identical. The Galax 970 Hall of Fame is the clear best card in every game in terms of pure frame rates, and the EVGA 970 once again underperforms in The Witcher 3. The reason I believe that this has happened is because The Witcher 3 continuously gave me lower results when it overclocked cards, and the EVGA 970 had the highest overclock out of the bunch, with it being pushed 200 megahertz over its stock speed. So let's move on to value in 1440p. Once again, the 970 EXOC reigns in the value for your money category with the South African Rand. With the dollar, the 970 WinForce begins to show its stripes by taking home the title in every game besides Shadow of Mordor. Passing over to the 4K frame rates, again, no surprise. The 970 Hall of Fame comes out several frames per second ahead of the competition. Moving on to the value competition, here's where the playing field thinned out significantly. No game was able to pitch a 30 FPS average in The Witcher 3, and the 970 Hall of Fame was the only GPU able to do so in Far Cry 4. The EVGA 970 misses out on the Crisis 3 benchmark, and strangely enough, the 970 EXOC underperformed in Arkham Knight and misses the boat there. However, in every game that the 970 EXOC qualified for, it wins the best value with the South African Rand. The Gigabyte Wind Force wins with the Rand in Arkham Knight, and the, obviously the 970 Hall of Fame takes the win in Far Cry 4 in both the Rand and the Dollar, since it's the only card that completed the benchmark. With the dollar, the 970 WinForce wins in Tomb Raider, Crisis 3, and Arkham Knight, while the 970 EXOC wins again in Shadow of Mordor. So what's the conclusion? Well, if you simply want the best GTX 970 on the market, the Galax 970 Hall of Fame makes a compelling choice with its high out of the box speed and decent overclockability. However, if you want more bang for your buck, then the Galax 970 EXOC should be your go-to card in South Africa. The other cards simply can't match its low price here at the bottom of Africa. And if you're in the United States, Gigabyte should get your money with the 970 WinForce winning most of the tests in any resolution. Clearly a great value at the price point that I tested it at. And with that conclusion, I want to give a big thanks to Wootware for sponsoring this video by helping me acquire the 970 EXOC and the 970 Hall of Fame. 
Woolware, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is South Africa's leading computer components retailer. They have an ever-expanding product line with incredible prices and a super helpful customer support team to match. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to wood up your PC and life and pick up the Galaxy 970 EXOC while you're there. And that's it for my GTX 970 roundup video. Like this video if you found it helpful. Dislike it if it was more disappointing than the Seattle Seahawks deciding to pass on second and goal with 25 seconds left instead of handing the ball off to Marshawn Lynch in the Super Bowl 49. I'll never understand that call. Subscribe to stay up to date on future computer hardware videos, including several reviews that I have coming out on both Corsair and G-Skill gaming peripherals. If you're looking to watch more of my videos, you can click the card in the top right hand corner to watch my review of the PowerColor Devil R9390X graphics card. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.